Good morning, everyone. That's it. That's the intro. I think we have it sorted. Anyway, this video, okay. I see all the time, I see all my friends, my photographer friends, I always see them asking themselves this question. Should I make a separate account for my portrait work? Should I make a separate account for my landscape work? So on and so forth. So I definitely understand this struggle and how people uh, go through this loop in their mind because I have definitely been there. I don't know if, I think some of you from early on will know that I used to be a generalist. So at one point for about two to three years, like professionally, and even just as like a hobbyist, I was photographing every single genre, every genre, weddings, families, landscapes, uh, self-portraits, commercial, like everything. I did it all and I built, it was like growing as a business in that way until COVID hit, but I was growing it that I was working in all of those areas. So, but what I wanted to kind of touch base on this subject is I'm gonna take it all the way back to the beginning when it's like you pick up the camera and you're interested in it and you're like, hey, I like doing this. You know, you kind of make a decision at some point during your photography journey, if you're gonna turn it into a business, if you want to turn it into a business or if you just want to remain like a hobbyist and this is your passion. And I think that those two paths actually have different answers, but like a broad range umbrella answer, I believe, and I know because I did it, you can have all of your genres under one umbrella and like you just tell people that's what you are. You, there's many people that do do this and they do it successfully. Never underestimate your power of how you can train people. You can train your followers to uh, come to know that you are a generalist. Never, ever, ever forget that. You have a lot more power than what you think. So if you have business goals, if you have financial goals, then of course, mastering one skill or mastering one genre is definitely gonna get you to those goals faster. And then if you're a hobbyist, um, if I was still a hobbyist, honestly, I would just do whatever I want. It would just fully be like for my own creation. So I think hobbyist and you don't really have like plans. You just love doing it. Oh my gosh, shoot your heart out and just share everything that you want. But simple answer, I do believe that yes, you can make a business out of being a generalist. It just might take a little bit longer to get there. So now that we have those things out of the way, I think, so for myself, I can only really speak about my own journey. Um, I've definitely been very focused, especially in the last year, I've been very focused on the yellow dress and making the world know the yellow dress. Many of you on this channel will probably say, what is Sarah Lindsay? Sarah Lindsay is a landscape photographer. So I definitely have built my name up in that as well and then pivoted to the self portraits, but now I do both of them. Um, I definitely cut out, because I just decided this was the path that I want, I cut out a lot of other genres. I cut out commercial, um, weddings, families, all of those sort of service genres I eliminated, but I still love just creating um, like maybe portraits that are outside of what I normally create. I always have, I've always been into fine art and you know, a fine art is you have a vision, you have a plan you wanna create and you execute it through your photography. So I've always loved the idea of like stories and creating stories that way, especially with portraits. I have a massive portfolio built up of all of this stuff. And to be honest, I think that experimenting and I truly encourage it, experimenting helps you evolve in what you truthfully love. Like, for example, this video, you guys are actually going to see me create a portrait that I photograph indoors. I'm all ready for it. That's actually what this video is about. But I'm gonna be creating just more like a headshot type photo. There will be yellow involved because I have a plan with that. But yeah, you're gonna watch me create something indoors outside of what I normally do outdoors, doing like a landscape photograph. And the reason why I wanna do this is because I get to points in my photography where I want to flex and I want to grow my skill, inspire myself or try something new that just really helps my mind uh, become creative. And I feel like photographing self portraits for myself, especially of my face, I lack a little bit on posing with my self portraits outside. I think that's where I'm actually pretty weak and pushing myself in front of the camera and having to pose with my face is only gonna help me for those por portraits down the road because I can see like different angles. This, you know, might look a lot stronger or if you pose this way, it might give off this sort of a feeling. 
So what I'm trying to do today is I'm creating a headshot with this, yeah, it's a scarf, a yellow scarf. I'm definitely gonna tone down how bright the yellow is, but I wanna create a headshot just with this scarf and it represents like the virtuous woman, which is about strength. So what I want to convey in this portrait, it's gonna be tricky to do because you know, I don't always know how to do this, but I want it to look strong. I want it to be a strong woman. It's gonna be myself, but again, strength. That's what I'm gonna be trying to uh, draw from creating this image. So I definitely think experimenting is so important to your overall growth, but if you were, as a business, uh, this image that I'm gonna to create today, obviously it has a purpose for YouTube. I'm showing behind the scenes of it, but I don't think I'll ever really do anything with this image. Yes, of course it's gonna end up on my social media because I like to talk about these things, but it's not something that I will take with me into my business. So it's definitely more for personal growth and just evolving in that way. And that's a very important as a creator. You've got to shoot for yourself. You have to have those moments where you are doing things for yourself because that's the best way to grow. Oh, that is the plan. That's my thoughts on niching. I say screw it and just kind of know what you want out of out of your photography. That's definitely a great place to start. And without further ado, I need to turn my living room now into a studio. It's an absolute disaster and I don't really have furniture. I don't even have like, I do have lights, but I'm not going to use lights to light myself up with this. I'm actually just going to use the beautiful window light. And yeah, I'm excited to create this. I haven't done this in quite some time because I've been so focused focused on the yellow dress self-portrait. So really, really excited to execute it and let's get started. This is where I will be creating this image. So this is actually my living room. This is what it looks like on filming days and what I'm getting already. That is all my gear over there in the corner. Camera bag everywhere, laptop. This is just, yeah, this is an average day for me when I'm filming indoors. So I have this space. This is my living room. It's quite small. I have a teeny tiny suite. And what's gonna be my light source is definitely these windows. Again, I do have lights, but I have always loved photographing with window lights. So I'm definitely gonna use this beautiful light to my advantage. And I think that I'll be able to create a really, really nice uh, portrait. I don't really have like a background. So this is gonna be kind of tricky. My walls are quite bare because at one point I thought I was moving to Australia. So anyways, I don't have a background set, it, set up. So that's gonna be something to work around with. But I do think since it's just a tight headshot, that won't really matter. This is what I'm going to be wearing is this yellow scarf. It looks really bright on camera, but I will be toning it down to more of like a, a gold. But this is gonna be wrapped around my head and you'll see what I mean. And then of course, I am filming this with my 5D Mark IV, but not my 16 to 35, that would just be silly. I'm actually gonna be using my 50 mil and it's a prime, it's a Sigma Art lens. I absolutely love it. Beautiful lens and yeah, that's all I'm gonna to use to create this. So one lens, one prop, one face. Let's see what I can come up with. So it'll be something like this. I actually wore this kind of very low cut. Um, it's a bodysuit actually. I just know I can easily pull down the sleeves because when I put this scarf over my head, I don't want like black showing through here just in case if any skin is showing through here. So it is important to think of little things like that. So I'm wearing basically a prop to show more skin and less clothing and I did my makeup, but I did it very um, subtly. This is, these things are really important when you do portraits like close up, you have to think about these things. Like whatever um, you're trying to portray in the portrait, again, I'm trying to portray strength. Like I don't wanna have, I'm very natural. I like natural sort of makeup. Obviously I, I did go with a little bit of darker color on my eyes, which I think will help add to strength, but you don't really wanna be, dressing up to go or doing your makeup. If you're a woman or if you're a man, like whoever wears makeup, um, you don't really wanna be putting it, slathering it on so much that you look like you're going to the club. You really have to think about the whole feel and vibe of the photo and match things like that. So I use the, um, oh no, it just went off. Sometimes it doesn't always connect very well. Okay, here we go. So I use the Canon Camera Connect app to do my self-portraits. If I'm inside, it's actually just so, so handy. So basically you can see, oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh, I love it. I was excited to do this. So basically I can see myself through my phone and I use that as a remote and it's so, 
so, so, so handy. I highly suggest using something like that when you're doing your portraits, but that's how I will be taking the image is with this remote. And again, I can see myself in the screen. There is now so many cameras going. So I have my, woo, I am way too close. So I have my um, remote all hooked up. I can see myself. This is going to work out beautifully. So yeah, now it's just a matter of moving around so that I'm in the best position for this possible. And I am shooting uh, vertically portrait orientation because I don't want to have so much of the sides showing. That's not what this shot's going to be like because I don't have the background. So important to, I think vertically will help eliminate just a lot of the dead space. I know already that I need to adjust my tripod. I need to make it a little bit higher just looking at myself in the screen here. So I need to make the tripod a little bit higher and probably a lot more close to tighten up around my face because right now you can just see way too much of my body. So a little bit of adjusting around, adjusting the tripod to be a bit higher and we should be pretty much ready to take this uh, image. I'm just looking in the camera and what I see in here, it's actually looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to put the scarf over my head and then I'm going to start shooting. I am using a prime. This is this such a beautiful lens for obviously the bokeh and so many reasons why we love it. But I'm going to be shooting this more at like f4, f5.6. And if I need to, I will adjust my ISO to compensate because like shooting portraits at 1.4 or 2.8 is great, but if you're doing your own self portraits, you need to nail the focus. And sometimes that can be quite hard. Like you don't want to focus on the eyes. And sometimes with portraits, you want the whole face to be in focus, which was what I'm going for. But if sometimes when you focus on the eyes, the nose will be out of focus. And I always find that is actually quite distracting. And it's usually when you're using apertures like 2.8 and 1.4. Beautiful apertures to shoot with, but I think the f4, f5.6 for tighter headshots is definitely much better. So I do just have to say, when you are a smiley person, um, like I'm always smiling, these shots are really hard to look so serious because it's not naturally me. So I definitely have to flex the um, modeling skills here and try to look like something that I'm really not. So yeah, let's get started. I'm going to start taking some shots and just move around and see what looks best. I think I'm done. I have a lot of Photoshop to do. We'll just say that. Um, that's okay though, because I actually like uh, flexing and kind of learning the more of the Photoshop skills. It's mostly with the background of like how I was shooting. So I definitely got some shots. I got, I got a few like where I like where I look and then I like the scarf and, and how it falls. It just basically covers my head, but I do think I'm going to have to um, put in a background of some sort, but probably just like a texture, just because as you can see, my background is completely white and I don't want that. I want more of like an earthy tone background, but since I don't have one, the compromise is adding it in after. So I'm definitely going to go through the flow and the editing process with you guys on this as well. I have always loved editing portraits. It's just always been a mindful space for me. I, I just find so much joy out of doing it. So I'm definitely gonna enjoy editing this one, but I'd love to show you how I put it all together, like the fine art portrait and how I convey the message across that I wanna get across. So without further ado, let me show you what I created and please, please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Normally, obviously I do landscape and other self-portrait outdoor stuff, but sometimes I like to stay indoors and flex the skills and learn something new. No tables, they are turning Tasting my own medicine Is a little bit bitter now And it's funny how the world works Finally finding something real And it only lets you die Us. I'll come the closest that we get is when I close off. I 
stuck on the coasters so that we get is never close enough for who You're just the same as me and that's what scares me most scares me most push away good things and we're never better off here is the final image and right away i'm going to say that it was not exactly like what i was visioning well it was but it wasn't However, I am very, very happy with the results. And when I say that it wasn't exactly what I was envisioning, I mean more about the expression. And I think that this image actually has a completely different feeling and meaning to it than what I originally intended to create. And I'm totally okay with that because I'm a believer that like I create based on like experiences in my life and how I'm feeling. I often say like I create my feelings and that it, it truthfully is true. And right now I'm working on this series of images of me in the yellow dress. And it all it's all about pushing through your fears and just virtues that I think are helpful to pushing through your fears. And I feel like when I created this headshot, it, um, it actually kind of aligns with that. Because I feel like with, with my eyes, the expression in my eyes, I feel like I look a little, I don't want to say scared, but uh, kind of. And I definitely don't see like this strength. I see more of like a, a little bit afraid, but not afraid to push forward, if that makes sense. And I feel like the yellow, the yellow for me always represents warmth. So I always want to convey that in my images, like the message that I want to get across is warm and obviously positive and happy. And the snow and the background is like that snowy, snowy cold. And yeah, so I'm really, honestly, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. And I think I now know a home for this image and I'm going to use it as part of one of my series. I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching the behind the scenes of this. Like I just absolutely love this type of creation and I feel so... Oh, I just feel so passionate and very fiery about it. And it, it really, really excited me. And I learned so much like where I've been lacking in the editing. So that definitely kicked my butt a bit. And it's like, okay, I got to brush up on my skills. But yeah, I honestly had the best time creating this. And let's go back to what this video is really, truly all about. Experiment your heart out and don't be afraid to try new things. I promise you it will only help push you forward. With that being said, please subscribe. I truly appreciate you guys and I will see you for next week's video. Bye. Soak up every feeling, no concealing what you dealing with nerves and can restore you. But how do you explain your being drained when you've been trained to put it